It's time for Bong City. Welcome back to Koki Gachas. And in this video, finally, I'm going to release another build video. I know I've ever done this in quite some time because I wanted to try to share builds with you guys that I've personally tested and used so that I know the ins and outs of it. And this one itself is something that I've used quite extensively. And this is my personal priest account right so as you guys know priests are very common used as an odd because we need the buffs right you just have to buff yourself you don't have to invite other priests to buff you when you go into elheim and you go into other game modes right so this is my personal uh, priest that i use and also currently she is up to 158k dp so i think it's pretty pretty decent and for me personally i also prefer to use something that is non full fs rank because if i were to just go full fs Honestly, I can't farm with this. I uh, want to use this also for MR and also I kind of like to build uh, the characters from scratch which is why I came up with this uh, build itself which involves auto attack. So starting from the stats, this is a very simple auto attack priest build but it definitely has some nuance but from a stats perspective, very straightforward. You always go with full AG and then you go the rest into strength. You can also add some into luck but personally I would think that uh, it's not that worth it. Just go with strength first anyways. The early mid game mobs don't have that much flea so you should be fine running non full crit and then subsequently you should be able to get more crit based off your demic cogwheels based off your cuts right that you're going to get uh, eventually. So right here this is a build very straightforward and the focus of course is on attack speed as you can see right here this is 390% and with just blessing alone you would go up to 428% over here and also I can trigger momentum management cogwheel so that would give, bring me up to like 440 plus percent and without eating food itself if you want to eat food a G potion you can go very very close to 500% I believe so this is extremely extremely fast hitting next we are going to touch on the skills so for the skills itself you can see it is honestly quite straightforward for the first drop skills i go with full heal sometimes as a odd your damage or your survivability might be quite concerning which is why we definitely need heal and then there is demon bane for demon bane is basically just for the base physical attack and also to get some of the defense and when hitting of against the demon mobs you are going to get extra stats this is why we add this the rest of the skills are not that relevant holy light is more for a fs build so we don't need holy light over here i'm just going to go with blessing increase the g extremely important and also angelus over here is because i have nothing else to add you can choose to add this uh, signum uh, cruises but i don't think that this is going to be um too useful since it doesn't trigger passively right we don't want to use this actively so this is why we don't have this for the second job skills itself you can see that this is a bit of a mess honestly the most straightforward ones that you want to add are going to be maze mastery definitely because you're holding a maze this is for your attack uh, damage this is very important holy judgment here is because you want to be able to trigger it passively right passive effect there's a 30 percent chance to trigger um this uh, holy judgment that deals 300 percent neutral physical damage with basic attack so this is something that i want you guys to note right this is a physical damage build so all your passively triggered holy judgments are physical damage they are not magic damage so try not to add anything with focus on magic damage this is where it really differs from an fs priest Next is going to be Aspazio. Aspazio is going to be super super relevant not just because of the holy stat. Later I'm going to explain further but you definitely want this and also because when you're fighting demons and undead right you're going to do additional damage including shadow as well so that is why you really want this. And then next is going to be Gloria. Gloria is important because we are not adding luck so getting 3 30 luck is extremely good and we have it at level 5 because of the duration right although it already gives 30 luck at level 1 you don't really want to cast it all the time you want to be focusing on auto attacking instead of casting gloria all the time so this is uh, the basic ones for the next part impo magnus itself is very important for the attack boost uh, other skills here honestly not that much to be added here i did add the increased sp recovery at level 5 and then also grabbed a bit of the resurrection as well as the uh, magnificent Kit. Uh, Magnificate here, I don't think it's going to be that important. You can either add more in Resurrection or add more in SP Recovery. You do cast some spells, so it's good to have some form of the SP Recovery as well. And then uh, for people that are asking why I don't have Sanctuary 
honestly, I don't think that Sentry is uh, that good. So this is how it goes. I would say this last skill uh, in Magnificate, you can either add it into Resurrection or SP Recovery like I've mentioned. Next, going to Tran's second job, Assumptio is important because it gives you a lot of survivability and especially for odd, like I mentioned, right, the same reason you want heal is because um, it really, really helps you with surviving. Although you might run out of a bit of slots for the auto uh, specs, right? However, I will say that uh, Assumptio is really, really so good that you don't want to miss it. Next is going to be Advanced Maze Mastery. This one is quite uh, straightforward. 30% weapon attack for your maze. Don't need me to say more. And lastly, I'm going to add in Holy Ward. So I'm still in the process of adding Holy Ward. I only have 29 skill points. Holy Ward increases your Holy damage by 20%. And most of the time, you're going to be using Aspersio. I'm going to mention later why. Even against monsters that are not uh, Shadow Element, Demon Element, or even uh, the Undead Element, right? You still want to use Aspersio. So that's why we are going to increase this using Holy Ward. Now for the rest of the skill points, really just add it into Meditatio. So nothing else good to add. That's why you add this, right? Just for a bit of the uh, SP regen. And also if you're to heal yourself, you can increase your heal by a little bit. But I wouldn't say it's really that significant. It's just that there's nothing else better to add. Now moving on with the equipment, I'm going to start with level 70 and then slowly move upwards. However, if you're curious about before level 70, right just replicate the level 70 ones because it's going to be exactly the same and here i do recommend for people to go for either golden hammer or the judgment of holy hammer i personally think that golden hammer might be a bit better i haven't tested the dps exactly but it feels a bit more satisfying given the fact that you every three basic attacks you're going to generate one extra um, holy damage hit that lands right on the opponent so this is going to be pretty pretty decent however uh, judgment of the holy hammer is going to also be good if you do have the cogwheels that i'm going to uh, introduce to you guys later right so for this one it's really up to you i don't think there's that much of a difference from the dps perspective from le level 80 onwards is where the real dps changes comes and then for the gear wise for level 70 i would say just go with a wool scarf your Shoe. so this is pretty pretty standard so let's move on to level 80 so for level 80 the weapon that i chose is not the golden hammer um the golden hammer here it's really very weak when compared with the grand cross so this is what i think is the best ones when compared with the other options be it in the golden hammer or the uh, judgment of the holy hammer i do feel that the golden hammer is one of the weakest ones followed by the judgment of the holy hammer and then it's going to be the grand cross so the grand cross great point the biggest advantage that it has over the other options is that it gives your normal attack way more damage so normal attack is also quite important not just the passively triggered holy judgment itself right so which is why i think that this is going to be super good just by exposing yourself you're going to get an additional 25 percent i'm going to take it as plus six because super easy to achieve plus 10 for an odd maybe not that easy to achieve but I also have an ult with plus 10 weapons, so it really depends on your luck. I'm not going to look at plus 15, of course. And then your normal attacks also add an additional 50 points of physical attack. Compared to this, I know that people might think that this is still better because of the every three basic attacks, but honestly, the multiplier is incredibly low, which is why this is going to be better. As for your gear, it's going to go with the Rydal set. So the Rydal suit here gives you a G. The focus is always going to be on attack speed because a priest really lacks a bit of attack speed. So Rydal set itself, this one is the uh, shadow moon cloak so this is the whole rider set and then it's going to have attack speed uh, plus one percent per 10 points of a g which is why i'm able to achieve such high levels of attack speed right so it's only possible with this set moving on to level 90 onwards you can see it's not being unlocked yet however i can still give you guys some recommendations so for level 90 there is potentially going to be an additional weapon that is being released it's a tuna that you'll be holding so that one right is similar to golden maze except the multipliers are a bit more crazy which is why this is going to be the tuna is going to be the best one right compared to like the golden hammer and the rest even better than grand cross at level um 80 and also if the tuna is not being released right then you can go with a slash i think that the slash 2 is going to be better than the grand cross at level 90 because of the bonuses that it has for the level 90 weapon so compared to right now it's quite mediocre honestly 100 percent magic damage if i'm not wrong it deals 300 percent magic damage uh when it goes to level 90 right so which is why this is going to be better but if there's a tuna definitely go for the tuna instead and then as for the rest of the equipment over here you can see that i'm honestly just putting random stuff for accessories i'm using the battles leash it goes to level 85 i will try to find a brooch because here this one is still slotless 
so regardless i can definitely find something better as for the enchants my main focus like i mentioned is going to be on attack speed so you can see everything is about a g a g and everything is um preferably a g if not i will go with luck to boost some of the crit percentage but here my weapon itself also has a g plus attack speed plus 3.8 percent if i can get the sharp bonus right over here which boosts the crit um, damage and the crit uh, rate itself right i will definitely get it but so far i haven't been able to see any of those lines or here i do have the sharp battle it's just for the pve bonus but overall i think it's quite straightforward right for those that have a g go for a g for those that don't have a g try to go for luck on your enchantments as i said uh odd itself is not going to get that many resources or that much resources so do what you can as best as you can right so anything would be good better than nothing now moving on to the cards i'm using all the budget options except for the ones on my weapon i'll show you guys so for my armor itself these are the main ones right awaken tf buck cut it's at level 15 because it gives me a g and this is very very important i am just going to grab as much as g as possible also gives you a bit of the max hp although it's not as relevant but still the main focus is on a g same for my uh, shoes itself it, i haven't fully awakened it but i do have a g plus 3% over here so this is going to add 5 a g across this and it's extremely easy to max it out you can see i still have uh, 300k zenny from doing absolutely nothing sometimes i'll just open this like a uh, uh, red packets right to get some zenny and then that is how i get my zenny on my odds honestly no other way i don't really do mvps on this character anyway so that is the main focus for those two cuts and then for the uh accessories itself if you really can try to grab cobalt cuts for now you're not able to get cobalt in the shop itself but from level 90 onwards the guild shop should have cobalt cut ready at 10k of this currency right good contribution so definitely grab those if you want to spend a zenny or try to grab off the marketplace for the cloak itself if you can try to get either nine tails or one of those cuts that give you a g same for the head right i'm trying to farm like a uh a nightmare cut to get the urgy but of course uh it's not going to be that easy to farm a nightmare cut it's just based on luck for the weapon though i would say that this has already reached the best and slot statuses you can see for my two cuts i have a side winder cut as well as a wolf cut awaken fully so wolf cut awaken fully can be slightly cheaper however it's still not the cheapest but it's good because it gives you crit it gives you physical attack it gives you crit damage and also additional uh, p damage and m damage at the cost of very very little so compared to purple cuts of course this is going to be much much better and more preferable as for the second one if you really don't have sidewinder cut just go with wolf for me i just full time like train uh, my character or put this character at the sidewinder spot until they finally got a sidewinder cut so this is how i got my sidewinder cut i didn't buy it off the marketplace uh, this character has no uh, zenny and options to buy anything off the marketplace purple cuts especially so i just farm it until it gets a cut so this is how i got my sidewinder normal attacks gain 10 percent chance to attack twice very relevant since it's going to passively trigger more holy judgment and also the next one i'm going to touch on is going to be on the cost i feel that the cost for this character is the most important thing out of everything right if you want to have the most impact you just have to get the appropriate cost so right here these are my three big costs and i'm also going to give you guys some alternatives first one is going to be judgment of gods and this is only all level four so uh, honestly it's not the most difficult if you don't have the right skills just combine your uh, court wheels that's how i managed to get the level four over here right uh, and as well as the momentum it's only at level three if i'm not wrong if i could probably get it higher if i combine more but i'm a bit lazy on the end but what does judgment of the gods do it passively trigger the holy judgment and it deals damage to multiple targets and deals 18 percent more damage so you know that those regular spots where, where you're farming it usually have spawns of three so this is where it comes in handy and especially since this odd is not going to be the most high damaging your main probably can one hit ko the mobs and that way it really really wouldn't trigger that much but for this odd itself what i have experienced is that a lot of times with this auto attack build i will not instantly ko um, the mob so the other mob will spawn and then i would be able to trigger the multiple targets holy judgment it's going to do massive amounts of damage and help me clear the mobs much much better of course if you think that you are going to play this character as a min right and you have much stronger um like uh, stats and all those cuts and all those gear wise right then definitely you can swap it for something else 
what I would recommend uh, on like if you were to swap it out is probably going to be Aftershock because it triggers additional crit rate which is very very important. Next is going to be Momentum Management Module. This one is ult ultimately really really important because of the attack speed like I mentioned everything depends on attack speed. The more chance you have of hitting the opponents the higher chance it is to trigger the Holy Judgment passively. And next is going to be Channeling Judgment Level 4. So Channeling Judgment Level 4 means that it, your basic attacks is going to have an additional 8% chance to trigger Holy Judgment. This is one of the most important. I would say that out of these three, you definitely want this one if anything. Without this, your DPS is going to drop a lot. So I think that this one is also um, the reason why this is a feasible build, which is also the reason why the Grand Cross is good because of the fact that uh, the Holy Judgment is going to get additional physical attack from them uh, when it triggers. So this is one of the reasons also why uh, Golden Hammer uh, is going to be the worst one compared to the rest of the options that boost the Holy Judgment damage. But personally, I think that Grand Cross combined with this cost is going to be the best. And then alternatively, like I mentioned, you can go with other stuff. Of course, Maze Mastery is also going to be decent, but personally, I don't think that I want to use Maze Mastery, especially because I don't have other options to put slot in this, right? And it's already at 15 width, so I can't really slot this in. And then, like I mentioned, Aftershocks is going to be good, just that I, once again, don't have slot. I really need this skill, this skill, and also Momentum uh, Management. So if I'm able to get a dual skill, which comprises of this, I would definitely be able to swap in either the Aftershock or the uh, Maze Mastery. Personally, I would lean more towards the Aftershock for the additional quick. Now as for the feathers, I'm just going to briefly run through. This is already covered in my feathers guide. So this class is a class that needs ignore defense, which is why I'm just going to go with 4 go 1 purple. And the purple here is definitely showing not intel because you're focused on physical damage. So this is quite simple. Everything is the, exactly the same, right? And then for your defensive ones, you can go with 4 purple and 1 of the go ones. This is how I have it. The sigil wise, I go with full survivability. Like I mentioned, once again, as an odd, you definitely want as much survivability as possible but I also have this weakness gaze over here so this weakness gaze over here is good because it gives you crit rate as well as attack speed when you enter battle so this is just the basic sigil there's not much uh, things going on here right as for the gold ones if you're already using as a main I would say that the berserk would be pretty pretty decent so berserk over here it's because you really depend on how many stacks you're going to have right and then the berserk effect is going to trigger so since you attack so fast it's going to trigger extremely fast so definitely go with berserk if you happen to get it in the long run for now I would think that um, this weakness case is already good enough as for this rage Bloodlust, I don't really recommend it because um, there's no way for you to regen HP other than healing yourself, so it's going to definitely slow you down. So, this is why I don't really, really like this. And that is all for the Sigil segment. And finally, with the whole build out of the way, we are going to do some testing actual battle to let you guys see why I really like this build. It's because it hits like a freaking truck and also it's freaking satisfying to see the multiple hammers land from the sky right and one of the main reasons i like playing this character is this reason and also why i spend a bit of time trying to build her up is also because of this right if you just ask me to like go with the main uh, fs rock fs slave you probably don't have to do anything but of course that slave would be just uh, out to waste right you can't really farm mr with it you can't really do anything with it and also playing this character is quite fun personally it's not just from a utility standpoint look at this damage right 7k 8k 7k 8k crits and it crits pretty often with witness case and the normal crit percentages without even having cobalt cuts imagine i have cobalt cut imagine i have those uh, relevant enchanted along the way right eventually i'm going to crit even more i'm going to hit even more and the holy judgment that auto triggers right hits around 16k to all these enemies and with momentum management module activated it's at 447 percent you can see that it jumps to 500 percent it's because of the weakness case look at this each stack increases crit and attack speed uh, 10 times so it's stack 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 and then after that once i queue up the enemy restacks to 10 times and it goes to 500 percent so every single time i will have 500 percent don't even need battle's blessing to trigger extremely extremely sick build and i'm not even eating any a g food right no food at all over here is just increase a g and then uh, the momentum uh, management module as well as the weakness case triggering so with the sigil system also there is no need for you to really be afraid of dying because of the utility that the sigils bring about the mortal body as well as 
the other stuff is really really decent and for the auto attack itself this is what i run with gloria assumpsio blessing Espersio, um impo and of course normal attack so this is a full bar already if you really want to change any skills you any angelus you can't really do so but of course depending on what kind of a mobs and i'm hitting if i really don't need the survivability i can choose not to use some of the skills and uh, just increase the efficiency that way so you can see all of my lost hp is going to be regen based off my sigils nothing is going to be threatened but of course i can't really fight like super high level stuff right now given the fact that my dp is quite low but i do think in the future i should be able to fight same level ones especially if they are either shadow demon or undead right if they are one of these three is super super easy I've tested not hitting on those uh, monsters. It is slower, but not exactly the slower. So still possible, definitely. And this one is the reason why I like it so much. Very, very satisfying damage in the end. That about does it for this video where I touch on the Bong CD Priest build. Honestly, do let me know in the comment section below if you guys have a FS Priest or of FS Priest Slave, right? And whether you are interested in turning them into one of these builds. I feel that this is really, really fun from an enjoyment standpoint. Don't need to pay money, right? It's free to play it's still very interesting build and can definitely help you farm MR if you're interested in doing so also if you haven't heard there is a new event in town called the pet memorizing event if you're interested in knowing how you can easily get all of these rewards in under 10 minutes definitely check out my video over here I'll see you guys over there this is Koki Gachas signing off